Well, hi, folks, and welcome to the season finale of Bridging the Gap, the show that's designed to help teenagers and parents understand each other, grow together, and develop a more harmonious relationship in the family life. Really excited today um, to be doing the season finale, and it's got a, it's a wonderful topic that Alicia and I have chosen and we're going to be talking about. But I want to bring Alicia in right now. So, Alicia, welcome. How are you doing today? Hello, everybody. I am great. Been a crazy couple of weeks, but I'm doing, I'm actually feeling good. Good, 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 good. That's awesome. And of course, I am one of your co-hosts, John Morris. I should introduce myself in case you're watching for the first time. But Alicia, I want to ask you a question right now. Do you yep. ever struggle with the idea and concept of holding on to things or trying to keep things exactly as they are? Yes, 100%. <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, I, I kind of root that in my um, moving at a young age, um, mm -hmm. having things change and not now not wanting things to change and having to learn to like let things go and move on sometimes. <laughs> because, and and it's, it is a common thing. And the reason I asked it in that way is because that's what I hear a lot that people struggle with either letting go th of things from the past or letting go of possessions and all of this kind of stuff. Um, me personally, and again, I'm, you know, I'm just learning a lot of this stuff as well, but I found the importance of letting things go, whether it be past experiences, whether it be homes, whether it be possessions, whether it be jobs, memories, whatever it might be. Yes, it can be difficult, but, you know, it, I think it's a very necessary point of life. I mean, at least you, surely, I mean, you and I both have got um, memories, I'm sure, that, you know, in some ways, we, for a long time, were holding us back. Would, would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, bad memories kind of really, you know, can weigh you down, even if you're not even realizing it. Um, subconsciously kind of dictates what you do. I definitely feel like for me, it's not so much the the physical stuff that I have a hard time letting go of just because I'll root that back to moving again. Because when we moved, we had to toss out literally yeah. <laughs> toys. Um, so that I don't have an issue with. It's the memories and the, and the like, emotional stuff that I definitely have a hard time letting go of sometimes. I, I agree with that. And, uh, you know, until this year, I know we talked about this a lot and we have done in other episodes until, you know, 2021 for me, I struggled with letting go of the memories of previous bosses because I'm a very yeah. visual person. I would remember the exact way they spoke to me, the exact things they said to me. And if anybody yeah. said, you know, anything that was similar to that in that certain way, that would be a trigger for me now, because I've gone through all these different phases in my life. I'm now at a point where I'm just like, if they knew better and knew how I was feeling in that position, they may have done better. You know, they did the best that they could with what they had. Maybe they didn't. But why should that stop me from living my life? And uh, I think, you know, that the first thing that, that I want to, I suppose, encourage anybody with, you know, we weren't designed to be just collecting all of this physical stuff. Um and holding on to the bad stuff. I, as I've said to Alicia a number of times, I see myself like I stand in a river and the river's flowing downstream and my feet are firmly planted in the ground. I can see the beautiful mountains, I can see the trees. I've got a vision in Scotland, it's up further, <laughs> further north. And I let everything kind of flow to me or just through me and past me. Anything that I don't want to hold on to, I just now let go, I just let it flow by. And I hold on to the stuff that's really important and special. And the more that I do that, the less that I get upset and frustrated and wound up and bitter about situations that, that had happened to me before. Alicia, do you have coping mechanisms that you use for, for letting go? Oh, gosh. I'm putting uh, you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just like thinking about, well, because the, the it, not maybe not to the same extent, but just like as a recent example. Yeah. Um, you know, John, that Ooh. my, my cat recently yes. got out and he's, I, I really think he's just sitting in the backwoods staring at us, but Have normally, no, oh, wow. I saw him. Yeah, I know it's been since Wednesday. So it's almost a week now. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm at that point now where I'm like trying not to panic. Of course. Um, but I, I kind of, Wednesday was crazy. I was look, out looking for him. I saw him. I saw him like he, we made eye contact and then he ran back. Um, so I knew he was out there, but there was this part of me that was like, okay, I could continue worrying about this all day, every day. And I had job interviews. So I was like, I can't, Yeah. I had like, I, I physically and mentally cannot worry about this right now. So I have to just put it off to the side. 
And then, I don't know, I just kind of hit this wall where I was like, I can worry about this on going until he comes mm. home. Or I can just be like, you know what? He knows where we are. If he wants to do that, that's whatever. I can't, I can't do anything yeah. about it. So I, I can't worry. I don't know if there's really like a technique or anything that I have that does that, but I, I think I am at times good at compartmentalizing. That's something that Jack, my, my boyfriend always mentions to me. He's like, you can take something and kind of put it off to the side for a second, just so that you can focus on this thing. I don't know if that's a coping mechanism <laughs> or if it's just like a band-aid <laughs> but that's kind of how I navigate things sometimes <laughs> I think sometimes it is important thoughts? so that again what are your thoughts on that <laughs> yeah I was going to say that um sometimes I think it's a good thing to be able to take whatever's going on and put it to the side um you know and, and, and I love what you said that I actually wrote um the good acceptance because the good acceptance is what basically I I call for accepting that you can't do something about a certain situation you know you can't force your cat to come in because if you chase after him he's gonna ball you know you went out and i saw this folks she was sitting out for 45 minutes <laughs> with a tin of cat food chum, 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 you know trying to get the cat back in and i probably would have been doing the same and uh, i think at some point you know you, you just have to accept the situation that's there you can, you, you know, I mean, you can choose to worry, you can choose to freak out. Is it going to change the situation? No. So this is what, you know, and again, I love this lesson because when I learned it, I realized that I actually have so much power within me as Alicia does, as you do, to be able to choose actually how you respond in situations. So the power to be able to say, I can, compart uh, I can compartmentalize my mind and actually be able to get on my day as opposed to worrying about the cat or about you know whatever it might be i think it's a really really powerful tool um for sure and you know it, it's i would say i mean personally that is a coping mechanism because you've accepted that you can't do anything about it in the moment but equally you're able to come back to it later on and say cat where are you you know <laughs> as opposed to freaking out and which would spoil the rest of your day because you had job interviews on that day did you not I did I did I had two I had three last week at the end of the week so it, it wasn't the perfect time for him to decide I want to run away I want an adventure well, yeah his he his escape plan or whatever <laughs> happened the day of my second interview that was huge and right. so I was like I can't deal with this right now and so I was like, I have to do this or else I will bomb this interview. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, that's, I think that's a very mature thing to do. I think it's a very wise thing to do because a lot of the time we can be so focused on the situation and so focused in the short term that you could have very easily said, oh, what about the cat? What about the cat? You're being interviewed, which as yeah. we've talked about right now is a, is a massive transition in your life. Um, you know, and, and you're really, you know, at that point where you're needing jobs and wanting jobs, and if you go in and say, I'm really sorry, but my cat's run away, you know, the first thing they're going to be saying, uh, there's the door, you know, <laughs> away you go. Yeah. But you did a really awesome thing of being able to actually conduct yourself in an interview. Yeah. And that was, it was not easy because there was that little like voice in the back of my head going, you got to worry about this afterwards. You, you're going to have to deal with this afterwards. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it definitely wasn't the easiest thing. <laughs> no, but you you did a fun, phenomenal job, I think, personally, in, in coping with that. Because I know, as a lot of Alicia's followers and, and fans will do, that, you know, you, you have anxiety. Um, and you're learning, obviously, since we've been working together as well, we're both learning, you know, on, on different techniques and coping me mechanisms to cope with anxiety, which is phenomenal. So, yeah, it's good. How would, how would you deal with coping and letting go because I have my I, I feel like everyone has their own different ways and techniques and and obviously you've done a fantastic job of learning to cope with all of that stuff oh, I thought you were going to ask me how would I have coped with a cat I, my answer that first came into my head was I would have got a tranquilizer gun <laughs> aimed for the leg <laughs> actually I thought about doing um the old school like box and stick yes trap thing. I really did I was like that's the only way I'll be able to get it back in here. <laughs> I just imagine you know, being like a sniper or something, you know, I'm going for the, I'm going for the tranquilizer cat. How, honestly, and I think it's a really good um, point that you raise. Everybody 
hopefully will start to develop their uh, own coping mechanisms. One of the things that I personally found for me that I, that I learned was kind of when I was beginning psychology and I started to understand how the brain was working and how what we listen to, if, if you ever get to see this on a scan, Alicia, it is gorgeous because the brain, when it's under a scan, responds obviously to different things naturally and it lights up in different sections and we wow. they put it under a color scanner and it will light up in yellows and greens depending what you're thinking on it's phenomenal it's really beautiful when you see this um, and that was from the university of mit and um i remember seeing this but i was like okay so how am i dealing so what i did was basically to put earphones in and i again just had my my phone going on youtube and wayne dyer uh, who was a doctor, um, I, I believe a doctor in philosophy, had, you know, basically just came on and I was listening to that. And then I started to take control of my mind. And I don't know, honestly, the, the science behind it at this point, but for whatever reason, I wasn't, I was no longer focusing on what I was angry about, frustrated about, wound up about. And literally in two hours, I went through to my wife who was in the kitchen and I said, I feel completely different. All of that anger has gone. It was like a divine thing. It was like, bang, it's just disappeared. Um, you know, now I know a lot of people would, would listen to that and say, well, that's great, John, you know, and, and I do sometimes prescribe that for people as, as a method of, um, you know, at least to try to align your thoughts. What the, the best I suppose I can surmise is that you know, we are, you know, really what we think. We become what we think. Um, if you think negative things about yourself, the chances are you are going to live a negative life. If you think positive things about yourself and you can develop a way that you learn to enjoy yourself, even if it's baby steps, you know, then you can really, you know, develop a phenomenal life. And that's what I'm doing now. Um, you know, so for me, for letting go was I supposed to accept I couldn't change anything about the past. And what good was it going to do me or anybody that I was in relationship with if I was completely peed off and angry all the time, which I'd been for five years. And uh, now, you know, I mean, I was out with my in-laws yesterday and normally that would have been, you know, friction rubbing because of how I was behaving yesterday. I mean, we had such a relaxed time. We had some of the most bizarre conversations that we wouldn't have been able to do, you know, like a year ago, um, like really, just really out there conversations, but it was wonderful. And one thing I found is when you actually emit, no omit, emit, I believe if I've got this correct, means to give out, omit means to uh, uh, absorb. So when you emit and realize that love comes from you, if you want other people to be loving towards you, it's like the old thing. If you love yourself, people will, at some point, and, and people will say, oh, you know, it's, it's far-fetched, trust me. What I saw yesterday, because I was and I am love, I'm not acting it, I'm not pretending, it was just this phenomenal thing, um, you yeah. know, and it's it's being aware of who you are and who you are not. Um, yeah. So for example, I, I remind myself, I am love, I am peace, I am all the things that I desire to be, as opposed to saying, I am not, whatever it might be. Yeah. Does, does, that, does that make sense? No, absolutely. And I was going to say, um, I've learned that myself a little bit that learning to like just love and accept yourself is yeah. then going to radiate out and start pulling in as well. Absolutely. It, it's crazy that you, it, a lot of people I feel like want the everything coming in before they can love themselves. And it's yeah. like, you have to do that step first. And it's funny because that's kind of like a whole culmination of like everything that we've been talking about this season Yeah. about learning to love yourself, accept yourself, and then, you know, radiate that out. Um, I think the other thing I wanted to, to mention was um, how you talked about, you know, you can't, you can't change things. Um, I think when it comes to like letting go, that was the biggest and the hardest thing for, for me. And I feel like for most people is just accepting, just straight up accepting what is and everyone's like, well, I wish this and I wish that. And what if this and what if that? And I think you said it to me once, like you could what if yourself yeah. to death. And <laughs> yeah, and my mom's taught, told me this for years and it is the easiest and the hardest thing to to do, um, to let go and to kind of move on is just accepting that this that something happened. It is what it is, but there's literally the only thing that you can do of it is to let it affect you going forward Correct. and that can be positive or negative so 
there's literally once it's done it's done all you can do now is change how you react to it and that's part of letting go and moving well, the, on the, the interesting thing about that alicia is that you know and again this must be one of those divine things because i haven't got this in my notes but we essentially by refusing to let go and move on with our lives we are the ones that keep that memory and that situation alive my ex-boss yeah. i could remember being rude aggressive bullying all of that kind of stuff you know in my mind and i was keeping that alive he could care less you know he's got his own problems to deal with you know and I, in in some ways i feel sorry for him because if that's the way that someone needs to behave to make themselves feel good and it doesn't say a whole lot about, you know, someone who is a in quote, out quote minister and a holy man. Um, one thing that I'm learning actually is the world really is backwards in terms of how we do stuff. And I love what, what you said there that, you know, people have this mindset of, you know, well, I'll, I'll get heat from the fire first before I put the wood on. Or, you know, I'll, I'll get warm first before I put my blanket on. And they don't realize actually we need to be the ones to do the first thing, you know, oh, we want world peace when everybody stops fighting. We'll stop fighting and you'll end up with peace. You know, it's, it's not difficult, folks. But I'm That's learning a this great the world, like, yeah, backwards. it's completely back. And see, I, I, I've, we've been going through the teen life coaching course, Laurie Bischoff and myself. And as we've been going through it, little things that the kids have been saying has led me to this point of view where it's been like the world the world is doing things backwards rather than saying, how can I be of service to somebody? They're saying, give me a job and pay me. So they want the benefits first before actually doing something about it. And when you learn this, honestly, folks, it becomes the life actually becomes the most simple thing um, really known to man. And like Alicia was saying, you know, people are thinking, what if, what if, what if, do you know that's how anxiety is born? We are not born with anxiety. There is a, there is a small fragment of research that's being done right now that is an anxiety strand. So you may have slight anxiety tendencies, okay? But anxiety itself is something that we birth into existence because we sit there and say, what if this, what if that, what if, and again, what if this doesn't work? What if that doesn't work? What if the business fails? What if, you know, and you can do that all the time as opposed to what about if it does work and you become a multimillionaire from it? What about if you put in the study time and it's not important about the money, it's more important about the person you become. What about that? What about if you can you know, provide a service to somebody that makes you that multimillionaire? And when you start saying, actually, wait a second, I have the power, rather than waiting for someone to give me something, I have the power to actually be able to do something about the damn situation. <laughs> We're always looking without as opposed to looking from within, uh, which yeah. I think is, is amazing for sure. It, it's definitely, it's becoming more apparent um, that that is definitely a trend and that is starting to become more prevalent as younger generations get older. Yeah. And it's, I'm hoping that this is going to help mitigate that a little bit because I know my generation, our generation was Ooh. pretty bad with that. And I just yeah. I feel like we need, we need to do a 360, just like you said, start with yourself and everything else will come. That's it. Um, yeah. I feel like a lot of times I, I really, I feel like there's this like jaded, I don't even know how else to describe it, but this like mindset of the mm -hmm. world right now that like, if you have that positive mindset, you're being like corny and cheesy. Yeah. And it's like this, it's like this um, rebuffment of, of wanting to try to be better. And it's yeah. almost like this complacency in the negative because it's almost safer, mm -hmm. I think, because it's almost like if you expect bad things to happen and they happen, yeah. then you're like, well, I, I knew it was gonna happen, yeah. so I'm not hurt. Whereas if you have to learn to be a little strong to deal with the bad things, but also then you're gonna have a lot more good things come out your way. So right. I think it's just a way to, to balance everything out and, and look at things from a different perspective. I, and I completely agree. And I think that's part of the problem is, you know, with, with people, I know we talked about this a little bit on a, an, early, in an earlier episode, you have different energies of people and you've got this, what I call low energy, which unfortunately is the majority of people around the globe, which is, well, if I expect bad things to happen, like you say, I'll never be disappointed or I'll be, you know, proven correct. Guess what? We create our realities by what we think. Every thought that you and I have had, you know, and people around the world have had has led us to this exact position right now. My parents being here today has been as a result 
of us saying, well, why not come over? You know, our house. And, and you look around, everything that's there has been a result of a thought that you have had. Um, and that's part of the problem is that a lot of people have these low energy negative thoughts because they, a lot of time they don't believe that something can get better. They don't want to put in the work perhaps to get, you know, to develop themselves or it seems like something so big um, that they want to try and bring other people down. You know, weeds like to crush, you know, beautiful flowers. And when things are growing and things are developing, of course, people are going to tell you, you know, well, you know, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. I have a no entry sign on my imagination. And I'm like, okay, according to them, I, I shouldn't be doing this. According to me and the divine spirit, this is exactly what I'm meant to be doing. And when you can put that no entry sign on your head and you can follow through on what you know is your purpose in life, your divine purpose in life, then you're like, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. <laughs> it doesn't matter if they call me under the all the names under the sun and trust me i've had them and death threats <laughs> you know it doesn't matter because that's from that limited perspective that is not something that i bring into my own life so you know it's uh <laughs> we're yeah. getting all philosophical today <laughs> it's all right it's a season finale we're hitting, it's a all, season finale. We're, we're hitting all the topics we're pulling them all together <laughs> oh well that's it but one of the notes that i made you know is is this um you know loss can be very painful for sure obviously we're, we're going through covid you know there's been a lot of loss that's there um and you know i i will never ever under undermine anybody that's going through you know that kind of loss but for emotional loss um like with jobs and with situations and even possessions and homes and things, loss can be painful only if we choose to see it that way. If I, and, and again, I, we both, you know, been through painful experiences. I, uh, you know, I know. And um, I look at things now as almost like a natural transition. You know, it, it's, it's like this natural close from one way of life into another, like my time in youth work into my time in business our time of doing this every Monday to, you know, taking a break, your realignment, obviously for your job and whatnot, and then seeing what happens next. Um, and one, one of the notes that I made to myself is if you spend all the time um, looking back and trying to recapture, you know, I suppose past experiences, whether it be past glories or holding on to past hurts, you're actually holding on to those rather than, you know, taking the time to experience the new ones. And my hope for anybody would be that they can look back with fondness on the past things that can enjoy, you know, the positive side of things. And, um, you know, then also learn how to enjoy the, the new memories that come, you know, and I think that would be my hope for, I suppose, for any parent or for any teenager that's going through that. Um, what, what are your thoughts? So I felt like, so I agree. I, I felt like, I don't know when it happened, but like, maybe it was when I moved to Texas and I was like constantly looking at the past of living here and all the good memories and my friends and my family. And then I don't know when it happened, maybe when I moved back and I realized that I actually missed yeah. Texas, I missed yeah. things about Texas and I missed memories and it was the people and the, and the memories. And I realized that constantly thinking about the past, thinking yeah. about the memories yeah. I was missing out on, that I was missing memories in the present. And then I was just missing even more. Yeah. So I I don't know. I don't know when it happened. It might've been my late teen years that I was like, you know what? I just need to sometimes need to just be in this moment yeah. and that's it. And I really, especially with my family, I've honed in on that because you never know yeah. when anything's going to happen you know, people are young, but crazy, crazy things oh, yeah. happen. And so yeah, yeah. I try to just fully enjoy every single moment that I have with my friends, with my family in the moment. I try not to think about whatever worry I have, any past memories. I just try to really dedicate myself in that moment because then if I do that in a year, I can look back and go, wow, that was really yeah. great. That's I want to recreate that. And that's it. And that's a big thing too, is I think a lot of people try to like completely recreate old memories yeah. when it's like, you can sort of do that, but do it in a new, fun, different, in the present way, you know? And I think that is where a little bit of that letting go and trying to just live in the moment and keep going forward kind of develops. 
Um, but yeah, it's it's a, definitely a hard skill. And and I think as a historian, a lot of times we we love to just look at the past and stay mm. in the past. But history is also the present. It's making history now. And that can be your own history. That doesn't have to be this grand big thing. It can be you and whoever and whatever you're doing. So those are my thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I completely agree. And I think, you know, it's important that, to remember that everything has its time and its season and life, you know, it is meant to be enjoyed. It's not meant to be hoarded. You know, we weren't meant to be, I suppose in some ways, that's why we can never take anything from this life with us into yeah. the next, because it isn't meant to be hoarded. It's meant to be enjoyed. It's meant to be, you know, fun. We, we uh, <laughs> funny story about this, actually, that, that jumped into my head there. How many times have you been around to families where they bring out the good china or the good mugs? Every family seems to do this. <laughs> yeah. And what okay. tends to happen is we, we've got a good teapot. Uh, it's an, it's a, an Emma Bridgewater teapot. And Katie loves Emma Bridgewater. So <laughs> we only bring this out on very rare occasions. And because it hasn't been used that much, it has started to crack. It has started to, you know, basically disintegrate because it hasn't it hasn't fulfilled its purpose. It's sat there basically to sit there and look nice. And that is the problem. If you don't use these yeah. things and you don't use the gifts and skills that you have, um, then, you know, they will go, they will crack, they will fade, they'll disappear. And you'll never yeah. have had that enjoyment, you know, from whatever it was. I mean, have you ever noticed the more you try to hold on to something, the more you end up losing, you know, if you're trying to, you know, hold on to the memories of, you know, like you say, past experience, people will recreate or attempt to recreate them and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and pounds and yen doing it only yeah. for that memory not to live up to, to what it was because it's been, it's past, we've enjoyed it, but you could have a much simpler one for free. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I do think there's a difference between, and there's an important, it's an important difference between, you know, reminiscing and, and enjoying yeah. the past memories and like dwelling on them yeah. because I know with my family we we often will just sit around and we'll talk about oh remember that memory remember that time remember this remember that and it's fun and it's exciting and, and you're almost you're almost creating a new memory by reminiscing but it's a very fine line of reminiscing and enjoying the past memories and being like, man, I wish I still had that. I wish this, I wish that. And I feel like it's finding that balance of like enjoying the, the past memories as well as enjoying the present and creating new ones that, you know, you're not trying to build up to these past that's expectations. But that's where that slippery slope is yeah. for a lot of people. Absolutely. I'm sure people are like, well, I do that. I, I, I look back and I just wish this and I wish that. And it's like, yes, but enjoy that you had those memories and enjoy that you can make new and better ones too. Definitely. And, and I think, you know, for, for me, it all comes down to when you actually let go of a lot of stuff, it frees up your life for other stuff to come in. Cause stuff, you know, things are flowing to us all the time. You know, the, the problem is if you're holding, you know, a ton of rocks and things, well, you can't pick up any new good or, or you know, new or good memories because they're just going to float past you because you're holding onto everything from the past. Um, I love your metaphor because that makes all the sense in the world. It's, I don't, for me in my head, obviously as an artist, as a visual person, I just see like, you're standing in the river with a big net, yeah. you know, and you can only, your net can only hold and carry so much. I, I actually, I have it with my hands because even with my yeah. hands, then I'm focused on, we can only hold one thought at a time. So I pick up one thought and enjoy it. And then I set it back down the water and then I pick up the next one. But the good thing about the, the river analogy is it lets all the junk that I don't want flow <laughs> past me, which is brilliant. <laughs> yep. Yep. I love that. I, I love visual analogies like that because it's oh, just, yeah. I feel like, makes so much more sense in my head that way <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing you know that's why storytelling is so important and so powerful is because people can then visualize it and hopefully it helps them as well um you know and all the things that they go through so yeah i mean i have i have loved doing this season with you it has been tremendous fun i can't wait to see what happens in our lives next have you got any thoughts before yeah. we, we wrap up for today alicia I think um, I just want to throw this out there because um, I mentioned this a little bit before with John, but when I started this with, with John, I was just ending my job at my, my last organization and I just got 
a new job that I'm going to be starting next Monday. And it just seems like such a perfect little bookend yeah. to this. Cause I mean, part of what I was getting from this was learning how to job interview and clearly it worked <laughs> because not only did I get one job offer, I got two in, in one day. And that just goes to show that, you know, putting the time in, putting the effort in, learning, being receptive to learning, it will make all the difference in the world. Absolutely. And if I can be, you know, an example and a testament to, to this, then then hopefully it will work for, for all of you guys out there as well. Um, I have absolutely loved this. This has been my favorite part of my weeks. I look forward to it. It's a time for, for me to kind of reflect and, and learn and to grow. Um, and I can then apply it to the rest of my week. Um, so I'm excited to see too where where things go for you, John, and where things go for me and what's going to happen when we pick back up. And who knows, the whole world could shift again by the time. Well, it <laughs> always is shifting. Better. And that's the thing. We shouldn't be surprised about it. You know, again, everybody wants to hold it in the exact same way as they, they knew it and they're happy with. Um, I think, you know, the, the best definition of someone that gets upset with life is they get upset because life isn't happening the way they think it should. Yeah. And when they're happy, it's because life is happening the way they think it should. Yeah. So, so. There's so much to be said about, and, and I think people kind of throw this about very carelessly of like going with the flow, yeah. but like there is really something strong and, and powerful about going with the flow, like really just like knowing where you want to be, but also just kind of taking what life hands you because a lot of things you just cannot control. Yeah. There is just not much we can do <laughs> and that's completely um, you know correct alicia that um you know we, we can't control you know what other people do or what other things happen but we control how we respond here's the amazing thing to a degree of what's happened with COVID. um there was there's actually i don't know if you know this actually but there are 125 as of two months ago there's 125 science papers that are being written about COVID every single day i don't know if, if you yeah the, every day right so wow. what they're finding now is people are almost like, oh, my goodness, COVID's terrible, COVID's terrible, oh, oh, you know, people are dying. And yes, they are. It's been horrific. But what people are learning, because they are stripping COVID literally into molecules and, and teeny tiny little, you know, as, as, you know, ripping out the molecular structure as much as they possibly can um, to actually examine and say what actually good properties exist within this. Wow. And what good can we take from this horrific situation? Um, and I think, you know, in, in looking at it from that point of view, if any good can come from it at all, yeah. that's, you know, a phenomenal step to take as opposed to, right, we need just to blast this out of the, the ether. Yeah. Um, and it, again, comes back to the awareness. It comes back to emotional intelligence. It comes back to, you know, just being aware of our thoughts and, and that so many amazing good things can happen, you know, yeah with our i suppose with, with with us pretty much so yeah i completely agree with that because I, I believe there's always a silver lining in every situation and you know with when covid happened so there's actually for me in my personal life there was actually several good things that happened because of covid um well when i was at my old job our social media following tripled because we had to focus on that. Um, people are now starting to realize that they can work from home more often. That's shifting our entire workplace dynamic. We're, we're having a much healthier, I think, workplace dynamic because you're able to kind of be at home, be a little bit more relaxed, be in a better atmosphere. Um, but also, this is definitely a personal thing, but at first, Jack, my, my, my boyfriend, he lost his job as an artist in a painting studio because it got completely shut down. But that honestly was such a blessing in disguise for us because for so many years he was working and he was literally the heart and soul of these, of these studios and he was not being compensated because he was an employee. Yeah. And now the market is literally like cleared. Like there is hardly any painting studios in our area anymore, which has now opened it up perfectly for us to do our own thing. And so now he can get the recognition that he deserves of being that artist so for us covid kind of like cleared out the playing field and gave us this beautiful path forward so 
always and at first obviously it looked terrible because yeah. we were like oh my yeah. god he lost his job what are we gonna do and it ended up being such a blessing in disguise for us so that's I think just such a great um if anything's going to be taken away from, from this episode from the whole season is always look for that little nugget of of goodness out of every situation because there always is one well that's it and you know it, it, rather than trying to hold on to you know everything that we you know we have in life and, and all of that kind of stuff sometimes it's just I don't know I feel more comfortable with these these days we're just letting things be and yeah. what's going to happen because the sad thing is you know for every tree and flower and everything that is going to grow a seed has to die you know there has mm -hmm. to be some form of you know um clearing for new things to come along and we were the same Alicia you know I mean I was filming out through the ages at the time uh doing the documentary realized that it was such a humongous project by myself and then you know we we're like okay what do we do now well let's focus on making money how can we serve you know people and do their cat portraits and do music and do all this other stuff that then bore you know, relationships in business, that then bore my first book, which is sitting behind me. Um, and as Alicia and I were talking about, that's then, you know, gone on to give me the opportunity to not only study psychology and to turn everything into a study, um, but also to get more into writing and to realize, you know, not to be so worried about this stuff. Yes. You know, I, can ch I can't change a situation. And if I can, I would. But if I choose to be worried and freaking out about it, then I'm just like, I'm actually making myself ill. I can't do anything about it. So I can either respond to it with peace or I can respond to it with worry. I choose peace personally because we choose everything that we do. So. Absolutely. Yeah, that I think is the biggest takeaway. You, It's <laughs> your response that matters. Life is not what happens to you. It's what you choose to respond. And I think that's a great place to end. Um, and Alicia, I have loved doing this show with you. I really have. And I look forward to season two uh, when we've both grown and we've both gone you know, further yeah. on in our journey as well. I think it's going to be tremendous fun. So have you any final words before we wrap up today? Not, not much. Just, you know, keep true to yourselves, you guys. Keep pushing forward. Everything is going to look on the up very soon so absolutely absolutely yeah. phenomenal well she's been the awesome alicia madonna i have been your host john morris and if you guys are interested in life coaching or we can help in any way comment set in the comment section below there's lots of links and lots of stuff there that are self-help uh, that we are providing out there and we're providing more such more stuff try that again each and every single week um, and we're going to be opening up patreon as well very soon for teen life coaching and for other forms of life coaching so make sure to stay tuned to that obviously we're down to one show now because we've got two season finales um but going deeper will still air on tuesdays and uh, you can keep in touch with us obviously and all the going abouts and whatnot until we see you next time folks take care god bless thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you soon bye everybody